But let me um, clarify this a little bit, because when you look at any given system, it's clearly not true that momentum is always conserved, because, oh, let me test this again, okay. It's clearly not true that momentum is always conserved, because right now, look at it, momentum is zero, right? And now momentum is not zero, and in fact, momentum seems to be happen changing regularly as this bounces back and forth, right? Oh, uh, as this bounces back and forth, sorry, I, I think this track doesn't hold the things well. Uh. Momentum seems to be changing regularly. So when we are trying to describe a system, I want to come up with a statement of uh, condition where I can say if this condition holds, then momentum is conserved. If this condition doesn't hold, then momentum doesn't hold. Uh, momentum conservation doesn't hold. Do you guys remember what we did with the energy? So, you know, we said, oh, we might not have done this explicitly. So with the energy, so, you know, we said, started out saying the total energy is always conserved. But in this class, we don't really look at the total energy. We look at mechanical energy. Um, so what we are able to look at in this class is what we call mechanical energy. That is kinetic energy plus potential energy. And I, we may not have said this. Um, when would you say that mechanical energy is conserved? So mechanical energy is conserved when dot, dot, dot. Uh, I want to come up with some concise statement that I can use to say whenever this concise statement is true, I can say mechanical energy is conserved. Whenever this concise statement is not true, um, I don't know if mechanical energy is conserved. So let's just start out with that. Um, so let me give you an example. So this cart moving back and forth, does this conserve mechanical energy? Sort of ignoring friction. Is the mechanical energy conserved as this bounces back and forth? Right? Yeah, it's moving at some speed. It has some kinetic energy. And once again, ignoring friction, its speed should not be decreasing. So uh, there, uh, we would say, yes, mechanical energy is conserved. So, um, so you know, friction not being there is the important part. But I want to be more general than that. I want to be more general than saying mechanical energy is conserved when there's no friction which is actually true a lot of the time, but I want to actually have a statement that's uh, bulletproof. It's, there's no situation where it's, the statement is not true. So in other words, what leads to the change of mechanical energy? What, if you ever saw mechanical energy changing, what do you blame, them, blame that on? You blame that on non-conservative forces. Meaning, so you know, here's an interaction involving conservative force. When I take this ball and drop it, before it hits the table, it, its kinetic energy has changed. But because gravity is, a put, uh, gravity is a conservative force, there's a potential energy we associate with it. So we can say whatever change in kinetic energy, it came from change in the potential energy, right? Now, the moment it hits the table, um, you see mechanical energy actually changing over time. So which force would you point to and say, that force is changing my energy, mechanical energy? What non-conservative force do you see here that's changing the mechanical energy of this ball? Yeah, normal force. So normal force is not a conservative force. Now, a lot of the situations where you see normal force, it might actually end up, uh, so you could have normal force present and have mechanical energy still be conserved. So, um, so I don't want to say, so this is one example of statement that I don't want to say. I don't want to say mechanical energy is conserved when there is no non-conservative force. I mean. That statement is true, right? If there's no non-conservative force, like when this ball is just dropping in free fall, then its energy would be conserved. But 
The reason I don't want to say that is when you look at this uh, cart sliding back and forth, is there a non-conservative force acting on this cart? What's uh, uh, the non-conservative force acting on the cart? Oh, ignoring friction. Normal force. Normal force is acting on this cart. So why does the normal? Why is the normal force not changing the energy of the cart? Now it happens to be balanced out, but um, yeah, that statement is probably true. But I want to look at something that relates only to the normal force. I don't want to bring in any other forces. So why does normal force not do any? Um, so here's another way to put it. So the reason normal, uh, Stephen, you're going to say something? Uh, it's perpendicular to the motion. Yeah. It at all? Yeah. So normal force is vertical. The displacement here is horizontal. So when you calculate the work done by normal force, that's going to be zero. So normal force, even though that's there, it does no work, which means there's no change of energy due to normal force. It's a different situation if from here. If I lifted this up, then normal force would actually do work and change the energy of this cart. So, um, so that's uh, really the concise statement we want to say. We want to say mechanical energy is conserved when, um, so this is a statement I want to be very careful in stating. When, so I am looking at the net work, the total work. When the net work by non-conservative forces oh it's going to be longer than i thought non-conservative forces is equal to 0 okay. so this is the condition i hope uh, this makes sense to everyone from what we've been talking about last week that even though I kind of forgot to mention this in class, that this makes a sense. That work is what gives you a change in energy. So we want to say that um, whenever this condition holds, then we can say mechanical energy is conserved. So uh, conservative forces doing work, you don't worry about that because you can account for it in the potential energy. You would maybe worry about non-conservative forces but only when they are actually doing work. Because when they are not doing work, then even non-conservative forces will not be changing energy. Yeah? So thinking about this, I want to now come up with a statement for when the momentum is conserved. Because here, you clearly saw the situation where you know, momentum is zero right now. It's not zero now. And in fact, it, and in fact, it seems to be changing back and forth. The momentum seems to be changing direction as this cart moves. So I want to come up with a statement that would say, all right, whenever we avoid this, we can say momentum is conserved. Let me ask you this question. What kind of forces would you blame for momentum uh, possibly changing? Momentum of a system possibly changing? So with, uh, as a reminder, with the energy, the kind of forces that we blamed this on was the non-conservative force. That's the forces that had the possibility of changing um, energy. right? With the momentum, we actually don't care if a force is conservative or not. Like when you look at this, um, the kind of collision between these, that force involves non-conservative force. You can tell because it makes a loud sound. And this doesn't conserve energy. But in this interaction, you will find that momentum is actually conserved. So with the momentum conservation, we are not looking at is the force conservative force or not. We are looking at a different label for the forces that either we worry about or we don't worry about. Hmm. I don't have too much time, so I might have to speed this along. <laughs> so uh, let me walk you through here. So this is our derivation saying that uh, net impulse is zero, therefore momentum is conserved, right? So what we are doing right now is trying to think of a way how this could go wrong. For each of these steps, how that step maybe is not always true. So, I mean, net impulse is change of impulse of these two objects. That seems like that should always be true, 
right? I wouldn't worry about impulse of some other object. Um, this is how impulse is defined. So there's no situation where this wouldn't be true. And on the next step is where we had that fortunate coincidence that the one force was equal in, could, that one force could always be paired. That, um, next line is where we had the fortunate coincidence where one force was able to be paired up with another force and we could say they cancel out, therefore equal to zero. What would you need to see happening in this system so that I don't have this fortunate coincidence anymore? What are the situations where you could not look at a force in your free body diagram and say, there's my reaction force? We actually had a description for that. Aisha? Yeah, external forces. So, you know, we didn't say it out loud when we are going through this, but one thing that's special about these forces here is that they are internal forces. They are forced from, this is a force, from another object within your system. So when you look at this impulse, you could say, oh, there's another impulse that pairs up and balances out to zero. But if you ever have an external force, you wouldn't be able to say that. That's exactly the situation you have here. When you are looking at this card, I am external, I am external to the system. So when I apply a force on the card, there is force on my hand. But uh, so if you look at the net momentum of the card and me, but then I'm standing on the floor, so I guess you'd have to include the Earth. So if you include the net, mom if you talk about net momentum of the entire Earth, then it's going to be conserved. But it's going to be hard for you to see that. So here, um, so that's why we don't go to that end. We say whenever there's an external force, then the net momentum might change. Right? So when I apply external force, then momentum of this is changing, and um, and and you know, and that's what you see here too. The track is external to the cart. So whenever this interacts with the track that's when its momentum is changing. Good. So um, for today, let me start us off here. Let me start us off here saying, momentum is conserved. Uh, for now, I will say this. When net external force is equal to zero. I want to actually refine this because this is not exactly correct. Uh, there's a small refinement I need to make to this, but for today, let me leave it there, and I'll come back to refining this statement later, probably on Thursday, as we look at more conservation law problems.